sand and face the west of the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. Dearest friends, 40 days ago we celebrated the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we recall the day on which he was presented in the temple, when he was offered to the Father and shown to his people. As a sign of his coming among us, his Holy Mother was purified, as we now come to him for cleansing. In their old age, Simeon and Anna recognized him as their Lord, as we today sing of his glory. In this Holy Eucharist, we celebrate both the joy of his coming and his searching judgment, looking back to the day of his birth and forward to the coming days of his passion. Please hold aloft your candles on this Feast of Candle Mass. Lord God, the springing source of everlasting light, pour into the hearts of your faithful people the brilliance of your eternal splendor, that we, who by these kindling flames light up this temple to your glory, may have the darkness of our souls dispelled and so be counted worthy to stand before you in that eternal city where you live and reign, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
God, worthy of God, receive glory and honor and power for thy screen all things. For thy pleasure they are and were created. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, clothed in majesty, whose beloved Son was this day presented in the temple in the substance of our flesh, grant that we may be presented to you with pure and clean heart. By your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. of Malachi chapter 3 verses 1 to 4. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, 
as in the days of old, and as in former years. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sit, dear friends, please. You may have heard me say this before, but you may not. I always avail myself of the ancient custom and privilege afforded to bishops to sit down to preach. It's not because I'm lazy or anything. It's because, well, how does a father speak to his children? Does he stand over them and project? Well, there are times. Or does he sit and speak with them intimately? 
Well, I am your spiritual father, your father in God. It is a fatherhood that I share most intimately with your parish priest, who this evening is instituted, inducted, and installed, i.e., married to this parish. I share my fatherhood, my spiritual fatherhood in Christ, my care for you, most intimately with him. And so when I am with you, my spiritual children, and you with me, we sit and we speak intimately, familiarly. Today is the Feast of Candlemas, a most wonderful, bright feast in the life of the Church, the Feast of the Presentation of Christ in the Temple. Our Lord, as we heard in the Gospel from St. Luke, and St. Luke always has a tender attention to these details, especially in relation to the Mother of God, Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, our Mother, our Lady. St. Luke tells us in the Gospel that Our Lady and St. Joseph bring the Christ child to the temple in Jerusalem when he is 40 days old. Well, today is the 40th day after we kept the feast of Christmas. And so today, in a sense, brings to a completion and a conclusion all of our celebrations of the Saviour's birth. And Our Lady and St. Joseph bring the Christ child to the temple in accordance with the law of Moses. God gave a great body of law, a great code of law to Moses, so that by the holy living, by the moral and theological and liturgical ordering of the life of the people of Israel, God, his, their Father, would be glorified and honored. They would be brought into alignment with him by keeping this law. Well, in accordance to that law, Our Lady and St. Joseph bring the Christ child into the temple. And in the temple, the Lord is seen for who he truly is. And he is seen by an aged man who most likely was nearly blind, Simeon, the priest. Remember now that the temple in Jerusalem was a place where continuous sacrifice was offered to God. The sacrifice of birds and beasts, the whole system of animal sacrifice, that was laid down in the law as God had commanded. Simeon, an aged priest, one of the many hundreds of priests rotated to serve in the temple day by day, he has reached the end of his priesthood, the end of his life, aged and old, with eyes dimmed, he nevertheless utters a word of extraordinary vision and sight. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. The Christ child is God's salvation, his salving, his healing of the world. Mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, Hence our wonderful tradition of candles on this day. And the glory of thy people, Israel. Now those hearing St. Luke's gospel description of the presentation of Christ in the temple, their ears would have been tingling with all kinds of Old Testament resonances. This story is full of overtones and undertones of the Old Testament. Now let's spool back to the Old Testament for a moment so we have the proper and deep perspective for today's feast. Temples. What is the first temple in the Bible? The Garden of Eden. Because it was the place of right praise to God. God was worshipped as God wished. The whole creation was in alignment with him and Adam was the priest of this new creation. But we know that the creation fell away from God in and through Adam's sin. But God is a God who wants to abide with his people, 
who wants to be near and intimate like a father to his children, not distant and absent. So although the world fell away, although that first temple fell into disrepair, we might say, God persists because he wants to dwell near and abide closely with his people. And so when his people are delivered by his hand from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land, he gives them a second temple, a place of his abiding, not the Garden of Eden now, but a tent, the tent of meeting, great detail is told to us in the Old Testament about the tent of meeting. How, when the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness 40 years, once they'd been delivered from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land, this is all in the book Exodus and the books following, God gives them his presence again. The tent of meeting, a tabernacle, a temporary structure which they took with them everywhere. But God descends in fire and power upon the temple and is intimately present. Moses goes in to talk to him, to commune with him. And in the temple, in the tabernacle, is kept the Ark of the Covenant, yes, which itself has the staff of Aaron and the manna in the wilderness. They took all of this with them. And God descended upon the tent of meeting in fire and power and glory. And he led them on. And he led them into the promised land. Temple number three, Solomon. Solomon makes this temporary structure, this tent of meeting, this place of intimate and powerful encounter with God. He turns it into a permanent structure. And you know, and the inside of it and the outside of it is decorated with images of the cosmos. For just like in the Garden of Eden, the whole of the created order was brought into alignment with God, its creator. But that temple was destroyed by the violence of invaders, and then a second permanent temple was built. Now, this is the one that our Lord walked the courts of, that he entered into the portals of. This second great temple in Jerusalem, which was built upon the crest and the crown of Mount Zion, Google this, put in temple in Jerusalem, and there are some uh, most amazing CGI reproductions of what the temple would have looked like in our Lord's earthly life. Vast, glorious, Herod the Great hugely increased its size and its impressiveness, sumptuously, magnificently adorned. Could you imagine how prominent this building was on the top of the highest hill in Jerusalem, crowning Jerusalem, the whole of Jerusalem, indeed the whole of the Jewish people, saw it as the epicenter into this temple, the Lord. Jesus is brought by his most holy mother and St. Joseph. But there's one more detail in order for us fully to appreciate this rich gospel passage. Although the temple had been a place for God's coming close, like a father to his children, his abiding, a place of his glory, Ezekiel tells us that because of the corruption of the temple, because of the corruption of the priesthood, the glory of the Lord left the temple. Now we understand the significance of what happens in today's gospel. For Malachi longed for the return of the Lord. The Lord whom ye seek will suddenly come to his temple it's a cry of hope. Even the messenger of the covenant in whom ye delight, he will come. And what's he going to do? He will purify the sons of Levi. He will make all things new. He will fill the temple with glory again. The Lord Jesus Christ 
is God returning to the temple. Yes, as a babe in arms, yes, helpless, lying upon the breast of his most holy mother, guarded by brave, quiet, strong St. Joseph, yes, but he is God. God is returning to the temple. Why? To fill it with glory again. Because it is in the person of Jesus Christ that God comes to his people again. To bring them salvation, to salve them, to heal them, to rescue them, to strengthen them, to lead them on as God has always done. But now he does definitively, perfectly, completely. The Lord Jesus Christ in the temple is God's glory abiding again with his people, God's coming near. The full richness of this is deep indeed. You, my friends, are gathered in this evening to this temple where Christ is again represented to the Father, not as a babe in his mother's arms now, but Eucharistically. Within the Eucharistic mystery, Christ is presented to the Father, shown to his people, and his glory shines forth. The fullness of God's abiding is here. He comes with power to heal, to save, to lead us on. It is in the Eucharistic mystery now that he reaches out his little infant hand to you to touch your face. You know how babies do that? With wonder and adoration, reaching out to touch the face of the one who looks at them. But now the Savior comes Eucharistically to you. And in order that he for him to come in this way, he needs a priest. He needs a priest to preside at the altar of sacrifice. He needs a priest to speak his words. He needs to, a priest to minister his body. He needs a priest to reach out his hand and touch the hand of the grieving, the sorrowing, the lost, the forlorn, the angry and unloved. Christ needs a priest, and he has sent you one. And what a priest he has sent you. In this liturgy this evening, Father Brendan, who has been ministering his priesthood amongst you now for some time, is married to this parish in a formal sense. The courtship is over. The marriage begins, but have no doubt as to why he is here. He is to make present the Lord in his temple again. He is to present to his God's people the glorious presence of Christ, to strengthen them with the teaching of the church, to minister the pastoral heart and love of the church, to lead you on to be Christ to you in a special kind of way, in a sacerdotal way. Iconically, Christ comes amongst you through and in the person of the ministry of his priest. Isn't this wonderful? God wishes you, each of you, through this ministry that Father Brendan exercises and will continue to exercise, he wants each of you, in a way, to become a temple of his glory. He want each, wants each of you to be radiant personally with his presence, with his light. And just as this church, now that darkness has fallen, to those who pass by it, will be luminous. These windows brightly alerting the world to the presence of God here. So each of you, in a way, is to be luminous like that, speaking 
of Christ to others, radiating a warm light of Christian joy and charity to all, being a place where Christ resides and abides and dwells his throne. Yes, at the altar, all of this happens, but in your heart too. Your heart is a throne as this altar is a throne. And you are a temple as this place is a temple. May Father Brendan, who begins formally his incumbency amongst you this evening, dedicate all of his energies, considerable as they are, to your sanctification, your making holy, through feeding Christ to you, through being Christ to you, to the glory of the Father. We are gathered together today to welcome Father Brendan as he continues to share with the community here the ministry and proclamation of the love of God. As we worship, let us ask God for his grace and blessing on our work with strong faith that the task committed to our charge may prosper and bear much fruit. And let us pray for Father Brendan as he continues to serve God in this holy place. Reverend Father in God, I, Colin Podmore, President of the Society for the Maintenance of the Faith, present to you the Reverend Canon Brendan Close, who has been called to serve as vicar of this parish and ask you to institute him to the care of its people. Dear Dr. Podmore, I thank you, and I shall continue following the acclamation of the church wardens. We, we greet, greet you, you in the name, name of the Lord. Lord. In the name of Christ, we welcome you. I thank you, dear Dr. Podmore, for your presentation. Father Brendan, you have been chosen as vicar of this parish. Do you believe that you have been called by God and his church to serve in this ministry? I do. We are thankful for your ministry here as priest in charge. Now I am pleased to welcome you as incumbent and will gladly institute you to this church and to this service. Dear church wardens, is it your will and that of the people of this parish that Father Brendan shall be instituted as vicar of St. John the Evangelist? It is. Beloved people of God, will you uphold and support Father Brendan constantly in his ministry? We will. Before admitting Father Brendan to the cure of souls and the care of people of this parish, let us now pray, not only for Brendan, but also for ourselves, that together we may be given grace to glorify God and serve the body of Christ in the world and in this parish.
Almighty Father, Saviour of the world and giver of all that is good, hear our prayers for your servant, Brendan, as he is called to serve in this parish. By your Holy Spirit, may he be strengthened in your service and filled with love for your people. As a faithful priest and true disciple of your Son, the Good Shepherd, may he preach your word, minister your sacraments, care for your people and lead them in prayer and mission. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, our Father, Lord of all the world, we thank you that through your Son you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for us, your faithful people, that in our vocation and ministry we each may be an instrument of your love and give to your servant Brendan the needful gifts of grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear Father, the Church of England is part of the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. In the declaration you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation? and making him known to those in your care? I, Brendan David Clover, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service are authorized or allowed by canon. I, Brendan David Clover, swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III, his heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Brendan David Clover, swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Lord Bishop of Bath and Wells and his successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. I, Paul Thomas, by divine permission, Bishop of Oswestry, commissary for this purpose of the Bishop of Bath and Wells, to my beloved in Christ, Brendan David Clover, clerk in holy orders, bring greeting. And I do hereby institute and admit you as incumbent of the benefice of Cleveland St. John within the diocese and jurisdiction of the said diocesan bishop to which you are presented by the Society for the Maintenance of the Faith, the patron thereof, and I invest you with all the rights and duties of the said benefice, and commit to you the cure of souls of the parishioners thereof, and direct that you reside in the parsonage house of the said benefice at St. John's Vicarage, St. John's Road, 
Clevedon, saving to the Bishop of Bath and Wells and his successors their episcopal rights. In testimony whereof, I have hereunto set my hand, and the episcopal seal of the Bishop of Bath and Wells is hereunto affixed this second day of February in the year of our Lord 2024. Brendan, receive this cure of souls, which is both thine and mine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brendan, remember your baptism into Christ. Remember your ordination into the Holy Church of God. May God, who anointed Jesus Christ as the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, anoint and empower you for the blessing of God's people. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Dear Mr. Area Dean Emeritus, I have instituted Father Brendan to the care of the people of this parish. I ask you now, please induct him. I will do so gladly. Brendan, I induct you as vicar of the parish of St. John the Evangelist and into the shared stewardship of the parish with all the responsibilities belonging to this office. Brendan, at your ordination, you promise to proclaim by word and deed the gospel of Jesus Christ. As you continue to work in partnership with the people of the parish of St. John the Evangelist, I invite you to recall your ordination. Will you be diligent in the reading and study of the Holy Scriptures and in public and private prayer? I will. Will you persevere in ministering the reconciling love of Christ in word and sacrament? I will. Will you undertake to be a faithful pastor to all whom you are called to serve, working with them and your fellow ministers 
to build up the people of God. I will. May the Lord, who has given you the will to do these things, give you the grace and power to perform them. Amen. Amen. I place you in the stall of the priest of this parish. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ fill you with all joy and peace, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We pledge ourselves to pray and care for the communities in this place, to share the word of God, to celebrate the sacraments of the new covenant, to encourage discipleship. Together, may we make this a place where we are empowered for witness in God's world. Amen. Instituted, installed, inducted. I think that deserves a great cheer. Yeah. You are deeply loved in this parish, Father because you deeply love. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer each other the sign of the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. you. Beloved brother. Beloved <laughs> brother. <laughs> Peace be with you. Standeth for the right hand of the Lord for them. It is incense which we bless the Lord. Ascend unto thee the sweet smelling sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord. 
God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to walk and which earth is given to human hands and may will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to walk and through the divine. The work of human hands will become for us the cup of salvation. Pray, beloved brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the offering made with exaltation by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. For you willed that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the Lamb without blemish, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who is one with you from all eternity who on this day appeared in the temple in the substance of our flesh to come near to us in judgment. He searches the hearts of all your people and brings to light the image of your splendor. Your servant Simeon acclaimed him as a light to lighten the nation while Anna spoke of him to all who looked for your redemption. Destined for the falling and rising of many, he was lifted high upon the cross, and a sword of sorrow pierced his blessed mother's heart, 
when by his sacrifice he made a peace with you. And now we rejoice and glorify your name, that we too have seen your salvation, and join with angels and archangels in their unending hymn of praise. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread, and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit upon your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the most holy and ever-blessed Mary, the mother of God, St. Joseph, her blessed spouse, and all of the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom?
and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, O Almighty Father, forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. of Christ. <coughs> the blood of Christ.
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ, the body of Christ. body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. body of Christ, the 
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. <coughs> Lord, you fulfill the hope of Simeon and Anna, who lived to welcome the Messiah. May we who have received these gifts beyond words prepare to meet Christ Jesus when he comes to bring us to eternal life. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Before I pronounce God's blessing, uh, knowing this to be St. John's Clevedon, I have got a fairly good hunch that there isn't a twiglet and a glass of Fanta afterwards, <laughs> but, but a table awaits in the parish hall which is heaving with fat things. A veritable Belshazzar's feast awaits us without the unpleasant after effects. <laughs> so please do let us do stay after Mass and let our Eucharistic joy flow into the social joy of our life together in Christ. Catholics are very good at quickly turning the church into an inn. So please do stay and let the abundance of the hospitality be an intimation of the abundance of the Eucharistic life that we have shared in this most holy sacrament. Christ, whose glory fills the skies, fill you with radiance and scatter the darkness from before your path. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, gladden your hearts and gladden your eyes and warm your hearts. Amen. Amen. Christ, the dayspring from on high, draw near to guide your feet into the ways of peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Almighty God bless you. 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 
Almighty God bless you. Almighty God bless you. Let us bless the Lord. May the divine assistance remain with us always, and the souls of the faithful through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Three cheers for Father Brendan. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! <laughs>